What's up, guys? Happy New Year! It's your boy Gerard and your girl Gabby. What's good with another episode of the Kicks and Shit Show for 2021? See, we're, we're, we're keeping that going. I we're still doing that. Gerard and I did not talk about this. <laughs> As you guys probably saw in our recap episode, we talk about that. <laughs> a lot more than we uh, probably remembered. So I'll just let him have his moment on that because it is a new year. It's a new day, y'all. <laughs> so, you know, there's a whole like new year, new you thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later on because the reality is new year, probably same you. But, you know, <laughs> different strokes, different folks. Um, Gabby, what's going on in those streets? Well, Gerard, <laughs> I think my hoodie that I'm rocking today. Yeah, explains it all. Speaks to what's going on in mm, these streets. Mm. It is wild, wild. times. <laughs> wild times over here in these streets. I will say, though, you know, I kind of missed you. I know we talked a lot over the break, but it's been a minute. Um, there's been a lot going on in these streets. Yes. Well, you're, you're very busy these days. I don't know if you still want to announce what you're doing, but you're very busy these days. I don't know. <laughs> so you have okay. less... You have less time to drop me with, I need 75 photos, which by the way, folks, she still does. We had a conversation the other day about, I need to post more stuff on social media. Like not me, but uh, us, uh, KNS. And she's like, I need you to take more photos. And I'm like, we did a whole photo shoot. What do you mean you need more photos? What's happening? We did a whole photo shoot back in October, fam. Like we still have stuff that we can use that we're going to keep dropping heat. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Gerard and I do also peruse the sneaker shops. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Throughout the year. So, like, I just want to give people current stuff, too. You know what I mean? They want to know what we're rocking. And I don't think I ask that much. I even, (laughs) guys, just so you know, I sent Gerard. I literally put a bomber jacket on my bed and two pairs of sneakers on top of it. Or one of each in two different pairs. And I said, which do you like better? But they were styled and art direct. It was 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 very nice. Two and a half seconds, Gerard. Let's, (laughs) like, manage expectations. And you know what they say? Practice makes perfect. So the more you take those photos, Rod, you too can also take two seconds to send me photos. You too can also make great photos for Instagram, even if you're me. It's, it'll take you more work if you're me. So this, all right, so this will, this will tie in. That. I did not say that. Don't hurt me. Gerard putting words in my mouth over here. This Wild will, times, guys. This will tie into that whole new year, new you. No, I, I will be much more on it about photos and, you know, just giving the people what they want, sharing more stuff with you. But it is 2021, Gabby. We are we are happy to be here. I know you particularly are also happy because it's 2021 and your New York Knicks are playing good basketball. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we even get to that. <laughs> yes. Gerard. Yes. How are you doing well, in you, these you, you see? Wow, folks. She's, she's doing better. She's doing better. She's really trying to remember. You're me, Gerard. Whole 30 <laughs> over here asking how you're doing. <laughs> Before we start the segment, you good. Know, um, you know, good. I think 2021. <laughs> I think someone I saw someone on on Twitter or some social media platform the other day say 2021, a continuation of 2020. <laughs> like, I mean, given sadness and the unfortunate events that are happening in the world, still, it's like, look, if we are going to see anything different, to steal that quote from Gandhi, and we are we sure Gandhi is the person who said this quote? Well, that's who it's attributed to. If we do want to see change, people, we must, in fact, be the change we want to see in the world. It isn't just going to happen magically because the calendar flips to 2021. If we want shit to be better, we got to be better. So I'll leave it at that. I agree with you on that one. And that's why I don't really believe in New Year's resolutions, because I think if you want to make a change, don't wait till the first year. I mean, I am someone who is OCD, who likes to wait at least (laughs) till the Monday, because that satisfies my Virgo OCD-ness, you know? Um... But other than that, like, that could be any Monday. Any like, Monday. Like, I started a whole 30 on Monday. See? Making changes. Going through a detox phase right now. But you know what? My skin is radiant. <laughs> it's a new day. No, but, all I got. But otherwise, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm happy to be back doing KNS with you, of course. Talking to our fans out there. Really enjoying ourselves. But as I said, before you asked me how I was doing, and I greatly appreciate that, I know you're feeling good right now. Like, your New York Knicks are playing good basketball. How does it feel? I mean, it's early. I don't want to get you too gassed, but... I was going to say, I don't... Gabby, don't get gassed! I, I knew it was coming. That's why I politely paused. I was like, I feel it. See? Guys, this is the chemistry that Gerard and I have developed over quarantine. Living our best quarantine life over here. Um, I am excited. And you know I said before the season started with Tibbs, with the new coaching staff, what the Knicks needed was consistency. 
We didn't need to win the championship this year. We just need to prove that we are a solid, consistent team. And we need to maybe go for the eighth seed. You know, let's grab the lowest branch on the tree. But you know what? At least it's a branch on the tree. And I think <laughs> the off season really caused a good reset for the Knicks. Mm-hmm. And again, it's very early. I'm not the fan that's like, we're going all the way. I'm not like a Jets fan. <laughs> And that sense. You know, one win, and we're winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> this is our year. But I do think that there's been a lot of positive changes. You can see the structure that Tibbs and the coaching staff has put into place, even on the existing players. Mm-hmm. They feel cohesive. They feel like a unit. And I think people are really surprised by that, which is why the Knicks have kind of come out um, – I don't want to say guns a blazing because it's not like we've been pulling off 30-point victories, but right. we don't need to be. No. I think that – each game, I like seeing a different player step up. Yeah, no doubt. Randall has been pretty consistent mm-hmm. so far, mm-hmm. getting bigger points and kind of taking over that leadership role yep. that was missing. And what I would like to see is this consistency keep up this season, keep it up next season, and then we can make a play for some of these bigger stars to help us take it to the next level to show we're not a team to be messed with anymore. Well, here's what I will say, and, and I, love, I love what you're saying there because you're being a, a realist. I will say this. Be optimistic because it's amazing what a franchise can do when there's competence, right? Mm -hmm. Thibodeau is, you know, people have issues, whatever. But when you have a competent to even more than competent head coach, it raises the level of the team. And he has put in accountability and these guys want to play well for him. And you can see it on the floor. Alfred Payton's been playing really well lately. You mentioned Julius Randle. R.J. Barrett's had good games. So here's what you can hope for as a Knicks fan. You guys compete, you play D, and you work your tails off. That's the kind of culture and atmosphere you want to build. What that means is it's going to keep you in games you likely shouldn't be in because of the wide talent gap you have, right, between like some of the top teams in the league. But because everyone is bought in and accountable and playing hard for one another, it keeps you in the game. And sometimes... You win games that you shouldn't win, and you do. And so this idea of, you know, what should Knicks fans look for? Look, here's what I'm saying. Remember, the NBA now, we have a play-in game or play-in tournament now. So it goes to the 10 seed. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it, Knicks fans. You, I think, will be in that play-in tournament. I have a feeling that this team will be around that 9, 10 seed mark. And you'll be there in a play-in. So that's what you have to look forward to. See, New Year bringing you some New Year cheer and joy, Gabby. <laughs> it took everything in my power to not jump in and tell you how excited I am to hear all of this. I'm like feeling a little bit clumsy, you guys. I don't think I've ever heard Gerard talk so kindly about the Knicks since we've known each other. The fact that he didn't apologize to my fandom already. <laughs> new Year, New You, Jay. I like it, though. And I, I agree with what you're saying, though. And I think the new format really does give teams like the Knicks that are kind of like, it's like the bubble watch with Mm -hmm. college basketball. Mm -hmm. I think the Knicks are a bubble watch team right now. And I'm hoping to see, I think there were smart choices in the off season Mm -hmm. in terms of trades, in terms of drafting, Mm -hmm. like everything just feels strategic. And you know what pains me the most? What? Is that I'm not on the court right now (laughs) shooting t-shirts there. It's like, of course, the year that everything is weird. (laughs) Which makes sense that the Knicks are good <laughs> no one's on there a year it. that everything is weird. It's like if a tree falls you know in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? I don't know. Because <laughs> I heard that tree. I'm watching that tree real closely. No, but it, it, it. The, okay, the one, you know, all po- I got to give you some dose of reality as well. Of course. The, the one thing I will say to keep an eye on, and this is, everyone knows this is about Tibbs. It's early, but pay attention because of every every team in the NBA right now, because of the compressed schedule, 72 games in this compressed season, they're playing about 17 games in 31 days. That's a lot of basketball. It's essentially every other night, okay? Which means there's no practice time because you need a day off to recover. And that's NBA basketball, contrary to what the casual fan might think, is very taxing on your body. Tibbs already has Randall and RJ Barrett playing heavy, heavy minutes. And that worries me as the season wears on because... It's like anything else. The longer you go doing that, that wears your body down, which leads to what? Potential injury. I'm not wishing that. I'm not saying that's happening. All I'm saying is that is something as a Nick fan, keep your eye on. Hopefully you get some guys back healthy so you can start distributing those minutes a little bit better so guys aren't worn out and getting hurt. I was going to say, I think once we get some of our injured players back, 
that'll help spread the love a little bit more. And I think that, you know, a lot of teams start the season strong Mm -hmm. to secure a good record for the season. And then they mix things up a little bit mid season, if they can let up a little bit, if they can try new things. So I'm hoping that we get to a point where we're able to do that. I don't know, because this is a whole new team, even with the current players that we've had, it's a whole new side of them. So all I got to say is I'm excited and (laughs) which you already know, but this brings me to my next point. Oh, yes. What's that? You know, I've said this before. The mm. Knicks are always going to be New York's team. For me, <laughs> oh, right. Boy, and as someone who grew up <laughs> going to Nets games. There we go. I have nothing but respect for the Nets. <laughs> but but see, you can't. It, it's like you can't buy happiness <laughs> and you can't buy the title of a New York team. And so I love that the Knicks are starting to become a headliner again, even without like the superstars like, all right, Katie. All right, Kyrie, I don't hear you doing too much talking over there in Brooklyn, maybe because it's across the river, but (laughs) Knicks are always going to be New York's team for me. And that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, because, (laughs) you know, I got a pair of really cool dunks over the break that I'm still crushing on, and I don't know how I'm going to style them yet, and every time (laughs) I see them, I blow them a little kiss. Well, you can Uh, can do a little Instagram story like our friend Tara does, and you say, outfit, what do you guys think I should wear with this, and see what the people say. Tara dress is way cooler than I do and also has a much cooler sneaker room than I do, but I do appreciate that. And Tara, maybe I'm going to call you and come over mm. and then you can help me style my outfit. But uh, I'm, I'm really feeling the ambush stuff that I'm yep. seeing. Yep. In case you guys weren't aware, is the Nike High Dunk ambush. I think any designer that jumps in and takes their version of a classic style, I'm here for it. Like, I love mm-hmm. the Sakai's, especially the original, um, for that reason, because it took a more classic silhouette and kind of makes it their own, right? Mm -hmm. So there's also a clothing line that came out in conjunction with the NBA. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, Dredd, I want your thoughts on this because (laughs) they came out with some Lakers pieces and some Brooklyn Nets pieces. Mm -hmm. So I know you already know what I'm going to say, so I'm going to let you go first on that one. (laughs) Well, first, I think your choice, your, 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 your issue, right? Because, you know, everybody says something with but that means you have have something not, not nice, but you have a critique to make. Your issue is why they selected the Nets, I'm sure, is, 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 is your position, right? The Lakers, we understand. Defending champs, they are, um, you know, one of the more recognizable sport franchises and brands in the world. So LeBron did it, all that. It, Kobe, it, Kobe, the history, the lineage. Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, it goes on and on and on. Shaquille O'Neal, all the great players that have played for that organization. All right, cool. But your thing is like, knowing you. What the fuck does Brooklyn win? They ain't won shit. Why they got to have fancy clothes? What about the Knicks? What made you select? What's the why behind it? Why did you select this team? And I get it. I mean, now I get it from the other standpoint, which is Brooklyn is a much talked about and discussed team because of whom they have on their roster. You mentioned Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, right? And so I think that's what they were thinking about to capitalize on the hype and excitement around Brooklyn being a new thing. And maybe potentially trying to be clairvoyant and saying, I see a Brooklyn Nets, Los Angeles Lakers, NBA finals matchup in the future. That's what I think the, the, the thinking was behind all that. I don't disagree. And I think that the colorway of the dunks that I have, mm-hmm. they're the black and white. Go so with, it perfect does with Brooklyn. Yeah. lend itself to Brooklyn. I'm sure that was a strategic decision. That was not by chance. My aesthetic just happens to be everything black. So of course <laughs> I like them. Um, <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, the Knicks have that heritage, too. Like, I know we've been out of it for a while, but you look at, like, the history of the Knicks players, the Nets just, it's not like they've been there at the same time. Like, for me, I feel like it's like, you know what, just throw in the Clippers while you're at it. Have it be the Clippers in Brooklyn. Wow. Like, because I see Kawhi and I see Paul George over there, you know, like, what's not to like about them? I'm, I'm that, sensing a lot of hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I I love Yoon. I think she does no wrong. I mean, I think for me, I haven't personally tried on the collection mm. for obvious reasons. <laughs> I like that my team. Um, yeah. And I also, you know, as a curvy lady, I like things a little bit more fitted, but I do mm-hmm. respect her style and I respect her perspective. I'm curious how much of that was her versus how much was Nike. Yeah. And those decisions. Like, here's the teams that you got to work with. Now yeah. you go and do your magic that you do. Yeah. Because so, it, it's also. Yoon, you're good. 
it's about moving the merchandise, right? And Lakers merchandise, of course, is going to move and sell. And now they're trying to figure out, is Brooklyn merchandise going to sell, right? It's not. But it's still sitting there. And that's the thing. And I think because it's targeted for women also, mm. and it's that more bigger baggy style, mm-hmm. even some mm-hmm. of the Lakers stuff is still sitting there, which mm-hmm. to me is very surprising because it was very hard to get my hands on these dunks. You know, the the, the, the clothing the, the clothing themselves, I, I agree with you. It, it is a, it's a very big baggy style. And it's something that will... You know, our, our, our guest today, Tease, talks about in, in many of her, 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 her uh, pieces of content she puts out, um, the idea about sizing and fitting. And, you know, it's something that I struggle with as a, you know, I'm a, I'm a slender build person, right? More of a European style body, if you will. And so, like, for instance, Jordan Brand or Nike, when they do something in standard fit run, do you know how big a medium standard fit shirt is? There is so much extra fabric around here. I'm like, the sleeve lengths are fine because I have long arms, but... It's just like I'm swimming in the middle. I'm like, guys, yeah, we can we can taper that in a little bit. Like, make some other stuff in non-standard fit. You know, do a little, I do, agree. Do a little slim. You know, I agree with you. I mean, you know what they say: little in the middle, but he's got much back. <laughs> Am I right, Gerard? Moving on. <laughs> anyway, I, I will say though, I am grateful that you and I wear the same size because of your European slender bod. I mean, that, you know, that is a nice little perk of that. But I, I agree, and I think that it fits a certain type, and that's totally fine. And I know that we've talked before, and I think I want to get into this with our guests too. You know, fit is everything, mm-hmm. not just mm-hmm. the fit itself, right, but the but fit the of fit, the fit. Yes, and. Yes. Not all fit are created equal with different body types, and I think that's where every brand across the board is really struggling to get that women's yes. sweet spot. And it, it's because there isn't a full sweet spot. If there's a reason that there's, when you go to a men's store, it's like the same yes. pants in every color. Yeah. But in women's, there's like twice the amount of floor space, yeah. twice the amount of styles. Yeah. It's because the variance in women's bodies, yes. the variance in women's taste, mm-hmm. it, it's, and, you know, I, I give brands props for at least putting it out there and trying to figure out what that is and moving away from the standard pink of everything. And, mm-hmm. like, even Jordan Brand, when they did their collection uh, the end of last year that had more pink in it, they were more berry tones. They were a little bit softer, a little bit more wearable. It's like I feel like we're being heard. So props to Jordan Brand. And, you know, Puma Women is doing a great job. Adidas is doing a great yeah, job. no um, doubt. But I think there's a lot of room to grow in that. And, you know, in terms of fit, there's a, a hoodie that I got over the break. I got one of my Jerry Lorenzo Fear of God Essentials mm-hmm. hoodies. Mm-hmm. Obsessed. I got the navy <laughs> with the black. Big fan. So comfortable. But I will say that's another one that I'm glad I got a small because I, I could have even gone extra small and been okay. That is never a phrase that I've been able to say. <laughs> Give me the extra small. You know, like yeah. so I'm glad that I w- the medium was sold out when I went to go buy the hoodie because it is a wider fit and like I can rock a small and I love it. It's so comfortable, but. You know, that's something that really comes into play. And I know you have thoughts on that as well. Well, and that's one of the challenges. And I I, I do not envy uh, women in that process when you guys are going out and looking for different articles of clothing because an extra small in one brand is in a medium in some other brand or vice versa or what have you. And it's, you know, generally speaking for me, a medium t-shirt plays the same across everywhere or a medium uh, long sleeve shirt like this plays the same across everywhere for you guys it's unfortunately not that way right it's just like no this doesn't work because it's not tapered properly or it's got this issue or that issue and you know there's too many you guys also have more uh things on your bodies to work with than we do right so it's 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 just that challenging. That was the most PC way well, I've ever heard you say that women are really smart, you know, <laughs> and people know what that means who are watching this instead of listening, that see my hand gestures that are accompanying that. As well, but, you know, I, this is a family-oriented show to a certain absolutely. extent. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get on to that. But, you know, and you did mention Jerry Lorenzo, who, of course, um, is now heading over to uh, Adidas to to work with them. And, again, we're going to talk about this a little later, I think, with our guest, I, you know, what is the future sort of of brands and these big time creatives and these big time designers? You know, are we going to see some different things? Are we just going to see more of the same? I.e., here's a silhouette that we already have. Just remake it in your image, which is nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. It's fine. But that isn't innovative. That isn't they're, they're, right. Like, I want to see you break out a whole new thing, do something different, something new. And let's see how the public reacts to it. I agree with you. And I think that, you know, I was on a really interesting clubhouse room yesterday. I've been dabbling with clubhouse. Mm -hmm. 
uh, about women in sneakers. And you know that's a topic I'm very passionate about. But we were talking about how, you know, it's great that brands are doing colorways for women. We also talked about, you know, my favorite thing to talk about. Is it just marketing? What's the why? Right, right. But also one of the girls in the room, you know, and props to that room for happening and, and props to Ashley Vera for inviting me in, female sneakerhead. Uh, in the community, she, one of the girls was talking about how, you know, we missed the days of like the lady Foot Locker where there were mm -hmm. actual women's mm -hmm. sneakers, not just yeah. women's colorways. Right. Like the girl, one of the girls said, she's like, I got small ankles. So mm -hmm. for me to rock a men's Jordan yep. Yep. to play in, even if it's in a colorway that's made for me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still not a shoe that's made for Correct. me. And I, I feel like that's the first time I've really thought about it that like that way because a lot of my sneakers are not necessarily meant for performance, mm -hmm. but that is the origination of Jordan brand and a lot of these sneakers that we are now rocking as streetwear. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. the functionality, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, where is the balance again? And we've talked about this throughout the show, fashion versus function. No and doubt. like why why are there no women's silhouettes why are there no mm -hmm. uh player exclusives for women mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. men's they're women's colorways yep. but on a man's sneaker like Agreed. where where's the disconnect there and i think that's going to be something that's going to be really interesting that we talk about but um in terms of jerry lorenzo i i'm excited to see what he's going to do i think he's got a he's changed the athleisure game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh, i'm normally a leggings girl i didn't buy the full fit real talk guys i only got the hoodie and your girl's having a little bit of remorse, but See? so you're it, saying if a well, guy showed up to take you on a date, wait. <laughs> but you know when the finger is up, it's serious. <laughs> but for me, I'm not always a full fit kind of girl. I like to mix and match. So no doubt. It, it depends on the person, and like that fit is fire. But you know, I don't know. Leggings give me a little more structure. I feel like I'm a little bit more business friendly. <laughs> I, I'm just There's saying, a, a dude shows up in a full head to toe fear of God fit to take you on a date. You're gonna send him home? You're gonna be like, nah, homie. I'm not. I'm not messing with you. I mean, <laughs> see, not wait, the... <laughs> wait. It depends because, first of all, a full fear of God fit. If we're going out at night. It's a little casual, my friend, don't you think? Like sweatpants for a date at night. Let's, let's, I, I let's say it's Sunday brunch. Let's, let's say it's Sunday. Let's say it's Sunday brunch. All right. Well, you know, maybe when things are open, we'll talk about that. <laughs> anyway, folks. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> well, because then that would let you know, hmm, he apparently has money. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, I, I just want to clarify because that is not my thought. That might be a lot of girls' thoughts that know what that is. But for me, I'm like, oh. He matches his outfit. He thought about what he was going to wear. Mm, see? He's not just going to match some Balenciaga sweatpants with a random blazer to try to flex. First of all, that, the, blazer, you know, the blazer wouldn't have been random. It would have fit. See? Anyway, moving I on. Know, in my head. So I just like an outfit that's strategic and thought through. And if that means a full fit, great. It doesn't matter if you got it at Walmart if it fits right. You know, like. I'm not going to be like, ooh, because it's fear of God. Let's go to La Bernadette instead <laughs> let's of go to La Taco Bell for brunch. I mean, I don't know if brunch or Taco Bell, but that cantina? <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, folks, <laughs> as you can see, we've not lost any spice in 2021. But stay tuned because our next guest, um, I'm really excited to talk to this person because they're tapped into sneakers and the culture and what's going on in fashion and different brands. But they have a unique perspective on and take on things and how you can, too, you know, get the things you want, but just be smart about it. So anyway, stay tuned for that. We'll be right back. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Gerard and Gabby. We're back. And Gabby, we're not alone. We are joined by an author. She's the author of a book called How to Build a Set Budget. She's a like super content creator. And when I say super, I mean like <laughs> OD, like on steroids, super content creator. Super sports fanatic, sneaker head. She is the host of the very popular YouTube channel, Talks with TJ, TJ Kiesel. What's up, TJ? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Very excited. I'm, I'm really flattered about the, <laughs> the super content creator. That is the first time I've ever heard that, but it does feel that way from time to time with as much content as I'm trying to push out. I mean, homegirl, you put out content. <laughs> Like, and it's awesome. It, you, yes, you are. I believe that's what Gabby's like. She is a content machine. And, yep. it, it, and it is. I mean, you like, it's like a full on factory. And I think people would see that all the content. And the first thing would be like, well, she must have a team of people behind her that produces all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, that's 
Nope. That's, that's not no, it. No, no, it is. It is solo, dolo, one woman <laughs> show over here from setting everything up for video, still shots, thumbnails, B roll, editing, everything. So it's sometimes a very long process, <laughs> but it, it's pretty rewarding knowing that I can continuously put out things that really capture people's attention. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I want to start, right? Because your your channel, it, it talk, talks with TJ, of course, is the, is the full on platform and, and, the ser- and the digital channel. But there's so many different playlists and avenues on there. There is, of course, the sneaker stuff, which we'll get into. There's the budget stuff. There's there's so there's book club. I mean, there's a million things. So where did this love of because really what you're doing is in a way storytelling. Where did this come from? Where did you think like this is what I love doing? I think it started all the way back when I originally was, was younger and got into sports um, because when you start to find those uh, professional sports idols, I think it's usually your their story that you fall in love with, whether you feel it's either relatable or it's something that makes you want to dig deeper within yourself because, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have a pretty comfortable upbringing and my parents made sure that was provided for me, but there's still more that you may want to do with your life and when you see, you know, your sports idols that are trying to do more in their community, more with their platform that they have, but also they are trying to be the best of the best on the court. I think that resonates with you. And as I continue to grow, it was their stories. And I think Nike and different brands that I connect with as well, they helped to push those stories, you know, out into the forefront. So I was able to see the stories of women and think like, oh, I can, I can be her. And maybe if it's not in the same professional light in sports, because I wasn't that great, <laughs> um, but I could still do that in my own way and whatever I would set out to do. And I think as I continue to grow up as well, like my mom does a lot of spoken word and my parents have always done like public speaking. So to understand that you connect with individuals in a crowd, whether it's five people, or whether it's 500 people based on the story that you're able to tell, they really want to genuinely see you, hear you and empathize with you. And so if you can find a way to do that through your words, um, I think it opens the door for a lot. So I was I didn't know that I would be able to do that on my platforms when I first started out. It was not heavily focused on sneakers. It was actually just all like personal finance. But when I decided to really come back to my channel in 2018, I wanted it to be a better representation of myself. And so I'm always trying to help young adults with their personal uh, finance, but also talk about kicks. And then that led to fashion and so many other things. (laughs) And you said personal finance. And obviously there is um, you can see hints of Dave Ramsey in your work. I mean, you talk (laughs) about um, aspirational, right? And, and And the different mindsets people have, right? The scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. Where where did that particular position on finance come from? Was that a personal thing for you? Something happened? Like, where did you start that? Like, nah, people need to focus on this. Uh, So growing up, my mom, actually, she suffered a car accident that left her out of work for a number of years. And they were really doing those formidable years when I was in middle school through high school. So it was beneficial in a way of having her more present because if she wasn't at work, so she was at every event, every school related activity. So I always had that support. But uh, it, as I grew older, I understood that was only possible because my mom was so smart and diligent with money when times were really good. So when times were bad, I, I was never the wiser of it. I didn't know a thing. I was still able to have a, a great birthday experience and a great Christmas. And kids thought like, oh my goodness, like they were still envying different experiences I had for birthdays and holidays. And I understand now it was only because when times are great, my mom made sure to save. She made sure to invest. It wasn't living to the hilt or living to uh, living up to our means. It was certainly living below. And she just taught me, you have to be smart with money no matter what. And that was instilled in me even when I went to school. You know, she said, hey, yeah, certain things are paid for. But if you have a job or you're doing work study, that's for you to manage and take care of. Don't don't call back home saying you need money for X, (laughs) Y or Z when you chose to go spend it on something else that wasn't a need. So you need to balance out your needs and your wants. You know, it was always make sure you take care of business first. And in school, I decided to switch to personal finance. So I switched to a finance uh, major instead of engineering. The the math was there, just the engineering didn't capture my attention (laughs) enough. Uh, Finance and business did that. And I think as I got older, I just realized you can make life easier for yourself, just managing your money uh, a little bit, just just some with some intention. And we had a personal finance class in undergrad. 
And that was when I was first introduced to Dave Ramsey. And I won't lie, like, I was a stark, like, Dave Ramsey follower at one point. But I think as I got older, I continued to read uh, different approaches to finance. I realized, like, you can take bits and pieces from, you know, uh, different paths Mm -hmm. and get to what really works for you. Like, you following Dave Ramsey's path may not make the most sense to you. And if you're not going to enjoy it, if you're not going to stick with it, then it won't actually help you reach your goals so you may follow the first and the second step but maybe you flip around you know three four and seven it just really depends and so i started to adapt the way i wanted to approach money to what really worked for me and for me that really was okay i'm not going to starve myself of doing the little things that i really love doing like buying sneakers because i don't want to just live to work and just pay things off like i want to continue to uh enjoy life i think the way it should be enjoyed so i said okay let me set out i can have a little fun, but I can also take care of business. And then as I started to do that, young adults would reach out and say, you know, I'm over here struggling and you're like the same age as me and I don't see you (laughs) struggling. You're not complaining about the same things. And I I just started to give like advice or hints here and there on Twitter. And there there was this long Twitter thread at one point that went on. I'm like, okay, if you hypothetically make this much money and these are your necessary like fixed expenses, and then we have like $500 left over in the month, How can you break that up to still have fun and do what you need to do? And people are chiming in like, I never thought about it like that. I never looked at it that way. And so from there, one of my friends encouraged me. She's like, no, you should really like write an ebook. Like, I promise you people would read it. I thought she was crazy, but nope, sure enough. So I wrote that in about a two week time period. Wow. And I let like my mom, my god mom, uh, proof it, go over, provide some corrections for me. And then I was like, hey guys, this is available free because this is stuff we should have learned in school and we never did. Like the practical stuff of what to do with your first paycheck or maybe how to approach cramp, paying down credit card debt and having a sinking fund for like Christmas or for sneakers that you may want that are pretty expensive. And once that happened, like people were reaching out left and right to be able to get that. But then uh, that same friend, you know, was like, hey, you are, you know, you're great. You have great personality. I think you'd be comfortable in front of the camera. Like, why not start a YouTube channel or why not start your YouTube channel again, really? Because, you know, people may connect more with a video presence versus just reading the book. It may not resonate because we all learn a little differently. And once I did that, uh, it's great. Like the best part for me is I'll hear somebody say, you know, I'll continue to watch your content. I love it. But because I've watched your video on um, how to set my own financial goals and maybe focus on those, I've pulled back on buying kicks, but I paid off that credit card. Or I'm only buying maybe five sneakers this year, but I finally started investing in my retirement fund. So being able to know that I'm a, I can help people in that way, like that's been everything with the platform. And I'm hoping one day I, that can springboard me into, you know, having these discussions with sophomore classes in high school or juniors before they really get into having their first job. So they know from day one, you know, you can do the main three things, right? You can uh, save your money, you can try to invest it, but also you can go and have fun. You don't have to feel guilty about it. That's incredible. I I, 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 I love it. All of it. Um, The one thing that we have through all our our common themes with all our guests here is that, you know, their careers and what they're doing fall into it is not the right word, but it's sort of like things have happened in their lives that sort of kind of ordain the steps and push them into these paths. And the the common theme is it's always the gratitude and the the, the reward they feel so much is from helping people, right? And it's like to you, like, that's what like you enjoy. You're like, I like I get to help people and it works for me because I'm like, I'm happy. Right. And it allows me to do, do what I love doing. Like talk a little bit about the happiness factor and the joy you feel about getting up every day and creating content. And obviously the joy you get, not just from creating it, but that you receive back from how people take it in. Well, I think I'm lucky in that I know a lot of Americans are unhappy with what they do in their actual nine to five. So if they find a hobby or their thing, uh, they can really use that as an escape. And I'm fortunate enough, I don't have to. So I really enjoy doing what I do. And pretty much I'm a specialist and an analyst behind the scenes. So I advise leadership on different moves they need to make. Um, within their field and the people that they manage to kind of get the results that they want. And it's almost no different when I'm trying to assist somebody that's viewing my channel on maybe how they can uh, approach different aspects of life. And again, it's all just like what I would advise or try to help them with. But I understand that we're all so different. And sometimes it's just having somebody care enough 
to try and help you. Like this isn't taught in school and it almost becomes a generational thing where, you know, who do we blame? Do we blame the parents or do we blame the individual who's not taking the accountability or responsibility to maybe be smart with their money or maybe give themselves the best start in life when they're a young adult? But we can't really blame parents if they were never educated. And so I just love knowing like, hey, I'm here to help. I would like to help. That's what I always did in school. If friends didn't understand what was going on in class, maybe the teacher just wasn't resonating, wasn't hitting home with them. I said, all right, listen, you know when I'm free, give me a call. I mean, I I was known for having study sessions in my room, especially (laughs) in college where everybody's over and I'm like, is the professor going to give me a cut of their pay for this semester? Because I now have like, you know, 101.2 that's happening um, in my room. But it's great to know that you have somebody come back to you and just say, I got it now. And when you see, you know, them taking uh, that next step and they're putting themselves in a better position, like that's all you should want. You should want the next person to win as much as you're winning. And if all it takes is me sharing the things that I already know, that should be a no brainer. At least I think to me, like people were shocked when it's something, let's say, related to sneakers, where I did a video on, you know, what to do with early access. Because first off, most of us don't get early access on sneakers. So it's the weirdest phenomenon to ever get when it pops up that like, hey, you have early access. And then people were freaking out like, okay, I have it and I don't know what to do. And so I rushed home one day, I think it was for the Dark Dark Mocha One release. I said, okay, this is what you do. This is what early access means. And People are like, oh, my God, like I never thought somebody would share like (laughs) what to do. And I'm like, listen, if you put that out there um, as good karma, just trying to help somebody like it will naturally come back to you. And I've been able to see that. And so I'm grateful for that. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter if one person and, and when it starts out, you don't get a lot of people viewing your videos. So if you get that one person engaging and that one person, it helps them. Uh, to me, that that that's everything. Like, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm able to have a positive impact on people with something as simple as sneakers that's kind of being used as the medium, because that's really what it is. Like, mm-hmm. when we're in school, it, we feel like, oh, well, the adults don't get us, and we maybe we don't connect with them. But if you're trying to actually connect and get that message across in a way that somebody will understand or they want to learn about, like, kids may not want to know about math, but if we're talking about Unfortunately, this is like a dark part of sneakers. But if you're talking about reselling a sneaker, mm-hmm. how to make a profit, a kid may pay attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A kid may pay attention mm-hmm. like, hey, if you have one hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty dollars saved up from birthdays and Christmases, you could get that shoe for retail and then flip it. And now you're able to pay for that laptop that mom and dad won't buy, that gaming system that mom and dad tell you they don't have the money for because they're taking care of, you know, actual needs in your house they may pay attention then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I think it's just finding like you can, if, if you're able to help people because you connect through something as small as sneakers, like take that step to help them because you never know how that can come back to you. No, I agree. And I, I love that your channel in general have such a mentorship vibe. And I think like, you know, it's the new year. Everyone's talking about resetting their budgets, what they can do differently. So, you know, this is why this is the perfect time to be having these conversations. And I love that you were a mentor even to college students when you were in school. I mean, I think that's a culture that, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I never really had that growing up. And then in my 20s, as I started to develop my career, they were like, oh, do you have a mentor? Do you have someone who can help guide you? And Mm -hmm. so you touch upon a little bit about how that connects to sneakers. Um, But what tips do you have for people aside from like the resale, like are there any tricks and tips that you've learned in terms of budgeting when it does come to buying sneakers? Because I know you said this before, resale is very expensive and even these streetwear collabs are expensive and brands like Nike and Jordan brand are pumping out. I think they had what, 95 new sneakers last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. just Just in the month of December, I don't know if someone threw it out there, but there there was like an astronomical number of sneakers across mm-hmm. all brands that released, I think, in December. It mm-hmm. was like well over 100. Mm-hmm. If we take into account every major brand, yep. you think about we may like half of those that come out, <laughs> right. but we just have to be realistic. We may not all be in a position to go buy like every single pair that we want. No, absolutely. So that said, though, what tips and tricks do you have that you could offer um, and, and just share with some of our listeners to help right. kind of prioritize and figure out, you know, 
I don't want to not make rent because I'm trying to get all the heat this year. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. So I think the very first thing is being self-aware. So be self-aware of where you stand with your financial situation as it is today. Not necessarily may where you want to be, but be self-aware of where you are today. If you know that, you know, you should know how much rent is, you should have an idea of how much you're going to spend on groceries and utilities and uh, you know, basic services, internet, phone, uh, gas, you should know what those are. Like as a young, like as an adult period, you should have a general idea of what that is every single month. And that kind of gives you an idea of what you're spending in terms of, you know, of your total outcome for the entire year. But we're just going to look at the month. So, you know, what is rent? What are those fixed expenses? That, that's never changing. So you wanting a sneaker, rent should never factor in. Like I've seen people say, well, I really want that, but rent's due on the first. Rent's due on the first every <laughs> single year, every single month. Like that, that should never play a factor in right. if you're getting a shoe or not. That money should never be touched. So be self-aware of where you are because outside of your fixed expenses, if you signed on to take on debt, like it or not, you're an adult. Take accountability and you're going to have to actually make a payment on that. So know where you stand in terms of your minimum payments. And for some of it, okay, there are mistakes or maybe poor life choices we made long ago, like in terms of student debt. Because I will tell people there's very few uh, smart reasons to take on student debt. Right, it's usually right. a few professions where it makes sense, right? If you have to be certified, you have to be licensed, or you're going to make that income, like a lawyer or a doctor or engineer. But be self-aware of where you stand with debt, and then know where you want to be with debt. Like, do you want to actually make a plan to get out of it? Because that's then going to determine how much you're probably going to be able to spend on shoes. So like right now, my goal is to get rid of at least 80% to 100% of my student debt this year. So I sat down, I already made my budget for January, February, and March. And in there, it's already fixed in there, the extra that I'm going to spend on debt. So that means that's taken out. Like I can't even use that as any amount of disposable income. Like it's automatically going to go towards my extra student loan payments. And so I would say once you know exactly where you stand in terms of your fixed expenses, um, knowing the, the debt situation that you're in and where you may want to go from there, are you then t thinking about future you? And thinking about future you is in two different ways. It's in having emergency savings and it's in having like a 401k or retirement or Roth IRA, something like at some point we're going to get old, God willing, and you don't want to just rely on Social Security to be the only way that, you know, you're, you're surviving or putting that burden solely on your kids. Not that your kids might not want to help take care of you, but I just think it, it's better when you've already taken care of future you right now. And so make a plan to put that money away so you don't even see it. And you may not be in a position to max out your 401k or 403b, wherever you work, but start putting something away today. We've all seen that chart where somebody starts at 25 and somebody starts at 35. The person that started at 35 never catches up unless they have a huge influx of money they can put into the market because compound interest just works that well and it's your best friend. So just make it to where, you know, that money comes out of your check and you never see it. Like when I get raises now every year, I just don't even acknowledge the raise that comes, whether it's two to 5% doesn't matter. I just let it go into my retirement. So I'm not trying to live then more off of that. Now I think once you've taken care of future you, you know, that means trying to have some emergency savings. You should not spend every dollar you earn every month. If you're earning $5,000 in a month, that's your take home net. You should not be spending 5,000. Like something should be going away into your savings. You know, the goal, the target is usually 10% for people. So try to hit that because no matter what COVID taught us, if you didn't have cash set aside mm -hmm. and you were found yourself in an unstable situation, like you weren't an essential worker, you didn't work in an essential industry, you didn't have income, you know, coming in, or at least it wasn't stable income. So now you're trying to worry about how do I take care of basic needs? Like I just need the roof over my head. I just need food on my table. I'm not even trying to go eat out. I'm just trying to get like basic staples on my table to be able to eat. So making sure that, you know, you have something put aside for future you for retirement, making sure you have savings. And then from there, what's the amount that's left over every month? And once you know what that amount is, that lets you know how much you have to play with. From there, though, I would still say take a look at the release calendar <laughs> because first off, everything that comes out is not a need. Like I like a lot of shoes and people will think it's weird, of course, being a sneaker YouTube where you don't buy every single shoe. Like that's what that's the assumption that people make. Oh, you'll just buy a shoe to so show it. Not necessarily. I buy for the toe. So I can like something, but liking something isn't a need even for my closet. So I always take a look at the release calendar that comes out, whether, you know, Nike is giving us a heads up what's coming out or Jordan brand and determine like, what are the must have pairs and look at when they're coming out. So for some of these shoes we know coming out, 
um, the the UNC four, the University Blue Jordan one, the Lightning four, the uh, Raging Bull five, the Cool Gray elevens. Okay, I know what months those are coming out. So I can look ahead right now in April, August, whenever they're coming out and go, okay, that's 140 or 160, depending on how much you have to pay. That needs to be set aside from day one, looking at my budget. And I think once you do that, you may have to tell yourself no for other things that month. I may have to say, no, I'm not buying additional shoes. Maybe I'm not buying additional clothes. Like I've already looked at February. It's stacked. It's so expensive. <laughs> February is crazy. It's That's so crazy. expensive. The the women's silver toe one. Yeah. The uh the the university blue one. Mm-hmm. Oh and the Carmine Six is coming out, which mm-hmm. is a must. I know yeah. So that, I know, I know it's a one. must. So I looked at that and I go, guys, do we realize even if I can't get any of these on discount because I get that privilege sometimes, it's four hundred and fifty dollars. And that's for grade school. We're not talking for men's sizes. Like that's <laughs> right. for grade school. It's a four hundred and fifty dollar month for me. So I've already looked at February, and I'm like, child, you are doing nothing else. <laughs> just, just, just listen. Just take care of take care of business. Try to get those three pairs. And so I think you know going into it with a strategy like that makes it a little bit easier. So like that money is set aside. So when those releases come up, it's just paying for it then if you're able to get it but the money is there and it's available and it's not a stress now of oh am i going to be able to pay rent on march 1st because i just spent 450 dollars on shoes like yes absolutely it's possible if you plan ahead um use some discernment and be okay with telling yourself no like there's a trade-off you know for everything like you mm-hmm. learn in school there's an opportunity cost for everything if i want to get those three pairs that means there's other things i can't do in the month i need to be okay with that Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. And I think um, one thing that is interesting you say with like the Carmines, um, I know we've talked about that before. That's one of your favorite pairs that's coming out. A lot of the uh, the co- classic colorways do come back every few years. So I think yes. like for people, it's important. Like if you don't get it right away, some of these resale prices, especially in the culture of bots, I mean, are crazy. I know you say even to get them at retail, for me, that's like hashtag blessed. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it so, is, yeah. In terms of planning out that way, I think that's really, really smart to be able to look at everything. And I don't think people realize with the Instagram culture and social media culture that you do have to take sacrifices to get those W's. It's not just about the L's. It's taking L's and other things yep. to be able to afford that. Like, if you want a full Jerry Lorenzo fit, you might not get <laughs> – and I know how you feel about that. <laughs> but you might not be like, all right, maybe I'm not going to cop the the threes that come out this month because, like – they're cool, and I would love to have it all, but I have yep. to pick and choose and prioritize. No, that's exactly what it what it becomes for me because it's more of the complete cohesive look and the whole closet. I'm thinking about what will go with any and everything, you know, throughout the year. So I, I have to be mindful. Um, like, okay, so December, Jerry dropped uh, his latest collab with a new era for the 5950 hats. I purchased three of those. Which meant there were certain things I wasn't doing in December that didn't take away from, you know, the Hyper Royal 13 I picked up or some other shoes I picked up um, in the month of December. But that meant there were at least that's at least a minimum of sixty five dollars, you know, times three hats that I wasn't allocating to something else. And then I knew Jerry was dropping a brand new um, release for essentials this month in January. We just don't know the date yet. And so, like, he um, teased the knit hoodies that are coming out. So I know automatically I want two of those. I have one knit sweater hanging up back there and I really want two of those. So I'm like, all right, it's probably going to be around 95, maybe a hundred bucks, depending on, you know, based on what the normal knit uh, pieces are, the hoodie. So right now, like my budget for January has $200 sitting there just for Jerry. It also means it's $200 <laughs> that's not going towards something else. And I'm okay with that. Like I have to look at some, there are going to be some months where it's like, one Jerry item and one sneaker or two Jerry items and no sneakers. It just really depends. But when you get into, you know, that area, we're kind of at that point, right? Where everything is minimum $95 Mm -hmm. or higher. So Mm -hmm. you you have to pick and choose. You know, this has been awesome, TJ. So Jerry, obviously we talked about him at the top of the show. You're talking about him right now. We know, of course, he's going to be heading over to Adidas um, and and, and working on, on, on their stuff over there. How do you feel about the brands and their collaboration with big time designers like Virgil, like Jerry, like like all these different creatives? Is this something you feel like is going to be, you know, monumental for the industry and really innovate and give us some new things? Or are we going to see more of what we've been seeing? Right. Which is all right. Here are some classic things that we have that we know are popular. You just put your spin on it and put it out and we'll sell it. 
I think that's been a lot of brands approach, maybe more so Nike and Jordan's approach than anything else, because I feel they are a little less lenient with designers <laughs> when they want to put their spin on something or really have a voice with a shoe or a style. I think that that's why it was so innovative that Jerry made his own silhouette. Like Jerry made a fear of God one and it was different, right? Because when he came, when he, uh, when he, helped remix the skyline to okay that wasn't something brand new like that was you know back in the 1990s we, we had seen that before it was one of uh, bill bowerman's true lifestyle mm -hmm. shoes that he came out with during that time but jerry was able to do an entire brand new design that we've never seen and i think that teased what could have been but nike it, there wasn't full trust there and so I think you have some brands like Adidas that really just kind of do give the reins over. I mean, look what happened with Yeezy. Pharrell mm -hmm. really does have full autonomy to kind of do his own thing. And with Virgil, we've we it, some people are tired now of kind of the deconstructed look. They're mm -hmm. like, okay, we've seen it. You're going to put exposed foam. You're going to fray some edges. You're going to uh, make it look as if it's still on the design table and not really finished. And you're going to slap a zip tie on there and kick it out. So it's now for some, I still like it. I would like to see different styles that are, that are, you know, broken down. What do they look like when they're in production? Cause that's kind of what, what we're seeing with his finished product. But I think you can't just stop there. Like what more is going to happen if, if Virgil had designs or aspirations outside of just deconstructing models, we've already seen, would Nike allow him to take that jump? We won't know yeah. until maybe he either leaves and that's mm -hmm. voiced or mm -hmm. it happens. And I think, you know, the, the audio that is out there for people to be able to find um, Paul from Locust and Wild Honey on YouTube. He did a video where he actually shared that audio. When you hear Jerry say, you know, I'm not under some five year deal. There wasn't security there of knowing like, oh, yeah, the plan that you have, we're absolutely on board long term with it. That's not the security they provided him. So to me, it means you didn't fully trust him. You didn't go all in or trust his vision. And like you guys know, as we're adults going through any type of relationship, I don't care if it's personal, business, friendship, uh, romantic, if there isn't trust, it doesn't last that long. Yep. Because it, you know, it, it's so what one wrong step and I'm kind of out the door. And I feel like he realized, okay, well, if they're not fully on board, like he had this whole design in his head, you know, of the three pillars of fear of God with it being mainline essentials and then athletics. Well, he now has that and like he wouldn't give them that. So I think as designers are learning their worth and they're OK to step away from the end all be all big brand mm -hmm. of Nike, as sad as that was for me as a fan, I, I think it's smart on his part. Yeah, as a absolutely if agree. If he's going to be fulfilled and do exactly what he wants to do, have a chance. Like, that's the thing. He has a chance to see what Fear of God Athletics could be sooner rather than later with Fear of God Performance, which I think is what it would have been called with Nike. Um, we don't know when that chance was coming and who wants to wait around. Like, we've already seen life is not that long. It's pretty short. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, I think that's what's so intriguing to me about the Adidas collab. Like, you see some of the crazy Kanye sneakers out there and you know the first instinct i mean myself included is like what are those you know, like they're, they're, <laughs> from a creativity standpoint and that's what it's all about right is that jerry is a creative and we were talking about this in our intro segment too is for me i love some of like like the ambush dunks or the Sakai's, and I know you love the Sakai Fragment yeah. collab that, that's rumored to be coming out, because it takes a classic silhouette and it deconstructs it and does it differently. And yep. I think that's, and I agree with you, that a lot of it is limited. So I'm curious to see that now that he gets the performance aspect and the technology from partnering with Adidas, right. what does that look like from a fashion standpoint? Because I think that's something that, you know, Adidas is missing in terms of their fashion meets function. I think their fashion side is great yeah. and their function side is great. I think Jerry is going to be a, a bridge. The one who brings them together. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, I think he can be that bridge because when you look at the I mean, look at the players that are on their roster. You would think they would have more aesthetically pleasing shoes mm -hmm. out there just because like we tune in to see you know, Dane, we tune in to see James Harden. I don't care if you don't like them as individuals, right. but you still tune in to see what they're going to do on the court. And we we pay attention to what's on their feet just as much as we do their game. And I, I do feel like it's kind of been a letdown, you know, by Adidas to help keep them neck and neck with the um, Nike basketball athletes that are present and on the floor. So I, I think Jerry can bring something different. I think he can make it to where you want to probably wear Adidas 
outside of being on a performance field, right? So outside of just being, you know, maybe on the baseball diamond, because I know that's something he really wants to tackle, or being on the court or maybe on the field, you are you are happy to wear that out because that's how he designs the essentials pieces and then the mainline pieces. They're meant to work for a fluid lifestyle. Maybe I have to go to the office, I have to go to the gym, I'm yep. casually going to dinner with a friend or with my family, and I want to be able to wear this and throughout my entire day. And I can layer different things and it makes sense. So I think that's what he'll bring. Now, will that catapult Jerry more or does that catapult Adidas more? That'll probably be the real kicker because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Adidas, it's based on market share. Like, where are you in the whole scope of your competitors? Are mm -hmm. you gaining market share on Nike domestically or foreign? Um, is Puma going to be the other new, you know, not really new kid, but I guess newer kid in terms yep. of really mm -hmm. resonating with younger people mm -hmm. now, like, mm -hmm. can you fend them off? Yep. Because they're getting the faces that all of these young adults, the younger generation knows. Yep. And if they can keep making strides, okay, Adidas, you kind of had the new kid on the block knock you down mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. way yeah. back with, you know, Blue Ribbon Sports. So I'd be curious to see who it helps more, Jerry or Adidas, because Jerry does just fine still on his own. Like all no of this stuff mm -hmm. still sells out on its own. So I think this was a really smart move by Adidas because they kind of need that shock to mm -hmm. be some you know be better than what they are now do we think guys as we wrap this segment that nike the reason why they don't give out the creative license like an adidas or puma might is a little bit of fear right in that look we are very protective of our brand and our silhouettes we are the og brand for so many reasons people know us for this and for lack of a better term we don't want you fucking that up so, <laughs> so yeah, you take this and this is it, but we're not letting you do nothing fancy because this is already proven to be what people like and we're not losing our market share because you messed something up. You think that goes into their thinking? I think so. I think Nike has those hard boundaries. They're that individual where they have hard boundaries set. <laughs> And if there's ever a red flag of you possibly crossing them, it's like one and done, you're out the door. Now, I also think maybe it's because whether we realize it or not, like those big corporate uh, giants, they still have a lot of older individuals that are in control mm -hmm. and that are making yeah. decisions. So as we phase them out <laughs> in life, <laughs> right, as they are, that's that new wave of people that are set to retire. I think it could change if you get more progressive thinking in there of let a designer play around a little bit. Let an athlete have a little bit more leeway in terms of what they're wearing. Like let their style truly speak. Don't try to just put somebody in Nike. Like I think to me, perfect collaborations don't lose the brand itself or the designer. It's like a merge of two perfect worlds together and they're not fully ready to let it all merge together. It's kind of like putting food on a plate and they're like, nah, I still don't want this like fully touching. Like I still want that segmented <laughs> plate. So maybe if they learn to let everything run together a little bit better, it would work. But I think that might take like, you know, different leadership and we'll see what happens there. They were smart enough to, you know, make that jump to e-commerce mm -hmm. a little bit faster and ahead of time than what they planned. So who knows? Maybe they'll have some uh, newer blood come in there and say, listen, OK, just Calm down. Just, you know, <laughs> literally take the stick out of your butt. And just <laughs> let people uh, have that freedom because it may attract that that gender, that younger generation even more. I feel like they may lose that from time to time. Um, I mean, they'll always retain a certain base mm -hmm. because they're Nike and they're Jordan. And it could be a little bit of Jordan fear. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you ask some people. They're not Nike heads, really. They're just Jordan heads. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is there always that fear that they'll bring somebody else in that becomes bigger to them than some other people? Like some, there are a lot of people in this space. They don't care about Tinker. They don't care about, you know, Kobe's uh, designer that works with him, LeBron's. They don't care. It's Jordan or it's nothing else. Yep. Yeah, no, I definitely think, think there's a lot of I think they people. are afraid of that. I think there's a lot of people like that, and Gerard is going to say, I'm sure Gabby's been waiting to say this now for a minute. <laughs> I think that Nike and Jordan brand, I mean, when they did the Travis Scott ones and the swoosh was on backwards, that was groundbreaking for Nike in terms of change, and people kind of flipped out, but it still maintained the brand. I think that some of these bigger brands have the fear of God in them. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there? <laughs> you really make an impact. I love and it. On that note, guys. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, I'm Gabby is have the have queen of puns out here. But guys, stay tuned because you know what's coming up next. America's favorite segment, 
shoe and tell. And listen, if you just look in, in TJ's background of her of her place right now. You know we're about to see some real serious heat coming out. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Shoe and tell. Hey, y'all. We are back with TJ Kiesel. And it is time for America's favorite segment. And I know it's America's favorite segment because you all go in the comments and in the DMs being like, we love shoe and tell. We love shoe and tell. Thank you very much. We love giving you shoe and tell. So it is time for shoe and tell with TJ. And look, I know she's going to show me some heat. So TJ, the floor is yours. Show us what you got. Thank you. So this is way better than just regular show and tell in school. And I can actually like have the pair sitting here. So the very first one, it should not shock anybody, especially after the conversation we had. Mm -hmm. So this is the Nike Fear of God Red. This was the friends and family pair that we never thought we would actually get. Mm -hmm. And Jerry did it in the most respectable fashion. It was pretty much a shock drop on Instagram. So I thank him for that. I would really hope other designers and brands can you take notice because this gave people an actual chance to be able to get it especially if you had notifications turned on for the post i had multiple friends hitting me up like it's live you gotta go you gotta go <laughs> so this was 190 plus tax it was the very first time i'd ever shopped through instagram shop and it went beautifully um so when you look at i mean the sway the entire design reminiscent of jerry doing his own thing because it's still very minimalist mm -hmm. in theory but um the toe box extends a little bit more than what it does on the regular fear of god raids and that's what i love now i got flamed a little bit because i i went for this and not the og you know nike mm -hmm. raid that yep. area that came back out during that exact same like same two week period but I'm a more of a fan of the sleeker design because I can wear this more casually than I can the actual OG raid. And so I respected that, that it did have more of a lifestyle appeal to it. And then I love lace swapping all of my Fear of God raids. <laughs> so these actually has the, the light bone in there. And then the other one, I actually keep it black. So there's always one mixed match lace that goes into each of them. But this is one of my favorite pickups of um, 2020. It completed the set. So I have all oh. three colorways now. And wow. uh, since look, we were look at talking that. about eBay, okay. this was a grail. <laughs> that this is an eBay grail. Grail pickup. So it's it's funny. So I was browsing late one night, which is always the worst thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and this popped up and I'm like, first thing I do, I think I went to go check like StockX and Goat. And I'm like, what is a six in men's going for? And the price was at least $500. I'm thinking, I just, I can't pay that right now. I just can't see myself wanting to pay that. And this was 180 mm. And it had like $10 shipping. And I'm like, and mm. I, this, I have a terrible, uh, terrible habit of doing this. I'll hit friends up like, do you think I should? <laughs> By the time they've responded, I've already pulled the trigger. I've already done it. I've already done it. I'm like, I need you all like on the ready to yes. give me yes. I need answer. validation. I need validation. Uh, you know, you can text me late night because I do the same thing. When I get those restocks, that's when I get my best stuff is the late night alert. So yeah, from now on, friends, I'm just going to message Gabby because I know she'll yep. respond to me. Yes. <laughs> and this one, I'm like, they, they had a replacement box, but I was like, okay, I'm fine yeah. with the replacement box box like shoe looked so unworn um and so i missed out on this when they did the whole anniversary release for all the air max ones back in like 2017 so to have the obsidian was everything yeah, for man. me um, i still need to get the royal now that's sitting in my cart for 225 so we'll see it. that's still the cheapest i've been able to find it if i, if I want a dead stock pair i'm gonna have to pay so much but uh the air max one is my favorite silhouette of all time so if i can only pick one sneaker and you just give me multiple colorways, I would absolutely take the Air Max one. I think you can play around with suede, leather, mm -hmm. mesh, um, all the different colors. And I think it says a lot to the fact that we owe a lot of the like retros we have to the fact that Tinker chose to put visible air in here. So yes. this was a this was a grail on I, I love eBay. the fact that you keep stuff in your shopping cart. I'm like, I, I do that all the time. I'm like, well, it's just <laughs> okay. in the cart. I'm like, maybe I'll go back and look at it later. <laughs> you no, know, absolutely. But the worst thing about it is when it's in the cart, they like to remind yes. you that it's in the cart. Yes. You get the email, you get the alert. It's like, by the way, still there. Nike <laughs> always, Wait, Nike's man. always like, hey, you got items in your cart. I know you all didn't offer to pay for it yet. It's absolutely <laughs> in my cart when you guys send me that hey would you like a discovery i absolutely would yeah i'll check out then i'll check out then i love so it so we'll go with this pair now this is sentimental because not because of like the, Ooh, the shoe yep. because of um how i acquired this so this was actually um, I, I love the shoe i helped model for air max day 2020 
So this was the Women's 270 React that came out as part of the Air Max Day 2020 color pack. You know, they always have like the actual color pack that they're focused on. Mm -hmm. And so this was the Sunset and the Blush Pair. And when the shoe first came out, just the fact that they decided decided to combine the 270 and React Foam. So like the best, you know, newer foam technology Mm -hmm. or comfort that came out with them. And then the 270 was ranked, I think, like number one shoe for 2019, possibly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I loved it. And so this was the pair that I actually had on in um, the promotional pictures and then video, which unfortunately was not able to be shown (laughs) because we had to rearrange (laughs) and change so many things. But uh, it stood out. But it's always a memory that I kind of completed that dream of working with nike so mm-hmm. now i guess i can like die a happy woman <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's a comfortable shoe too that's not just a fashion it's issue, but so comfortable, comfortable. i have to stop myself whenever we get new colors in um especially in kids full locker or, or down at regular full locker i have to stop myself like tj you don't need a million pairs of 270 <laughs> reacts i'm like you're gonna play you're gonna mess around and then it'll become like jordan ones where you're sitting there with two three four five shells of just ones and i don't know how good that is for you but <laughs> um, that pair is always special, so that'll be a pair I actually just keep in the box. I don't even have them on display, like in my closet. Uh, it just stays in the box. Now, this pair, which you guys should know, um, yep, yep, box yep, box, yep. <laughs> is shouts to jump man. It's special because I think this proved to everyone that if brands do it correctly. You could want a women's sneaker as much as you want any sneaker. And a lot of men are still salty. They don't have it. Um, but thank you, Virgil and Jordan, for giving women yep, early yep. access. Yep, yep. There it is. I was say, so, do you know what I love about this one is that it's nice to see a woman with this shoe because most of the people that I know that have this shoe are men. No, no. I So as soon as it's funny, it. I was sitting there. And I have like I'm signed into my sneakers account on on two different phones, and the notification <laughs> popped up and it's like you have early access for women. It, it said like women, like you get to go first, and I'm like, wait, wait what? what? Like, <laughs> and listen, I was on it. You could not tell me. I I stopped all operation <laughs> that day in life just to make sure that I could I could go for this one. And I think yeah. that was the really nice thing about it, right? It was a women's shoe. It was one of the most anticipated you know, sneakers, period, collabs, and the fact that Virgil and Nike, you know, and Jordan said, okay, let's give the women a shot at this first, since Virgil designed it for women Mm -hmm. with us in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm forever grateful for that. So this was, to me, this is when a collaboration is done correctly. They didn't take anything away from the Jordan 4 that we know and love. Instead, Virgil, I think, just helped add to it. The leather is so buttery soft. It feels like suede. He had just the right amount of deconstruction along the toe, um, with kind of like that ripstop design that's overlaid around the toe box, and then the padding that's on the inside. So if people don't have this, it is so insanely comfortable. Like there's additional padding all around the ankle collar nice. to the point where you step into this, you're comfortable to wear a four all day. And we all know nobody wants to wear Jordan four all day. I don't care what you say. White <laughs> cement, black cement, you don't want to wear that thing all day. <laughs> So this was beautifully done. The fact that it was monotone and still captured everybody's attention Mm -hmm. um, is something I was really happy about because I've gotten more into tones. I blame Jerry for this, but (laughs) I've gotten more into tones. And so just to have something that's tonal like this uh, was everything because it's not a stark white shoe. We all normally just pair Air Force One with just stark white Mm -hmm. with everything. But now you can go ahead and put this sail shoe with everything and it does go with everything. So. Um, I just think this was really a celebration for women to know that men were breaking their necks, you know, two thousand, <laughs> three thousand, four thousand dollars to get their hands on this. And it's like, yeah, and you got to make sure you tell people it was a women's sneaker. <laughs> TJ, so, is that a, oh, sorry, Gab, I just want to ask TJ really quickly. Is that uh, is that sale? Is that uh, dead stock for you or livestock? Oh, no, this is livestock. The second I okay. got this, okay. it was uh, it was thrown on okay. foot okay. in a video for different outfits. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I have a Nike Fear of God, the new jacket that he came out with, the sale one. That's actually on the way. <laughs> so nice. okay. as soon as it arrives, I was like, you know, it'll go so beautifully with these. So you'll see these in a picture soon on Instagram. Trust okay. <laughs> me. Well, I have two questions. Okay. Question number one. I like that you talk about the extra cushioning in the ankle because – in the clubhouse that I was in the other day, I think I mentioned about women's sneakers fitting differently than men's sneakers, even mm-hmm. if it's a, um, or men's sneakers not fitting women correctly. Do you think they put in the extra padding to help it become more of a women's fit almost? So when you look at women's shoes, women's shoes are actually made, I don't know if most people know this, a little roomier than what men's shoes mm-hmm. are. 
Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the centimeter um, variation of how they're measured, women's are actually a little bit roomier. But I think in this, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was because of collaboration, maybe it was because of women. Because normally they will, if it's a Jordan women's collaboration, they will try to elevate either the material or the experience. Mm -hmm. Now it's hit or miss sometimes if they really do a, a good job on that. But I think they were just trying to make this an all around luxury uh, okay. sneaker for women. So I think maybe that's why they added the extra padding in there. And I still went true to size. So I still got a women seven and a half. Okay. And with the extra padding in there, it doesn't feel tight. It's not too tight. It's not restricting. It's just a more plush uh, wear. I will say that. Okay. I love that. And then question number two. On your sneakers app, because I, I actually had another friend also who got the alert for mm -hmm. women to buy early. I am not one of those people who ever luck out. But I am, I'm curious, though. I say that because I usually put my preference as men's uh -huh. on my sneakers app because I usually buy men's sneakers. Right. Do you have your preferences set towards to being women in terms of sneakers or men's? Mine is set for women's, okay. and that is, it's actually based on the fact that when I go to buy running or performance-based sneakers, it's usually for a women's size. Okay. And so whenever I pull up a shoe, like sometimes I even have to correct it because it, let's say I am searching a men's shoe, they'll try to automatically correct it sometimes to a seven and a half because they, that I've had, I have mm -hmm. a seven and a half check for women. So I just have to be mindful of that. But yeah, when I went to go pull this up, a seven and a half women, like my normal size that I have in there pulls up. And that's helped me in the past because there, there was one time, uh, bless his heart, there was a Nike expert that I had a super long conversation with because when the Nike React came out, the flight net pair, they were having issues behind the scenes with technology. And so I couldn't purchase and I was a member with early access and I was supposed to be able to purchase it. So we're just sitting there chatting away while, while Nike Tech and IT are trying to figure it out. And then he actually hopped on my Instagram, saw that I was lifting in like a Nike Zoom trainer. And that's not the best if you're doing like heavier deadlifts mm -hmm. or squats because you don't want that air there. You want your foot as close to the ground as possible. Mm -hmm. And so he actually sent over, like gifted me Nike 4 Metcons. Nice. Um, Nike Metcon oh, okay. He, he knew the size based on looking at the profile to see that I was a women seven and okay. a half. So that may, that probably helped me that my, my account was already set to women because <laughs> I saw a lot of men trying to change their size. And one of my friends did that, CL Now's 23. He's another creator on YouTube. He tried to get his size just to see if he would like it. And it actually reverted back to a normal women's size. And so his fiance was actually able to fit it and she liked oh, him so much. Dope. Oh, that's a good story. I yeah. love that. I'm literally going to change my sneakers app back to women's as we speak. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I leave it at women's. Um, and I've still, I've been lucky enough to hit on quite a few pairs on there that like some were hyped and they weren't even for me. They were like in, in friend sizes, like men's tens or 10 and a half. Like I've hit on the Travis Scott fours, the blue pair. I've hit on the Travis Scott one lows. I've hit on, uh, the UNC, um, off white ones. Now I had, I got what? lucky shock drop. <laughs> accent. I got shock drop. I hit that on the shock drop, but I've been able to hit on some pretty nice pairs. They weren't all for me, which is the bad part, but whatever. <laughs> Guys, all right, so out of that, that was just kind of an old to old to women, I should say now, where we come. And then this one is special, Ooh, not, because one year, not because of the year it was released, but because it's the shoe that really got me into needing to that. collect and never get rid of things. Here they um, come, here they come. You said need. need the most recognizable shoe. Here they come. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I know Gerard feels some kind of way right now. Yo. And listen, I I un DS these <laughs> on my birthday, so 31st birthday, November 21st. I actually went ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Your birthday is November 21st? Yeah. So is mine. Oh my God. This is incredible. <laughs> right. I think this is a sign that you need to buy the Concord. That's, oh, what, that's well, listen, how I'm taking not, it. Listen, this I, is I exactly think so. what it is. So, <laughs> the, the very first, so this was actually like my first release also working at Kids Foot Locker. Like, if you work just normal back to school holiday, okay. Once you work a Jordan 11 release, you understand the craze that these still have, even for people that are not um, every day on the app, you know, trying to cop every pair that comes out. No one cares when an 11 drops during the holiday, everyone is there. There's a line down, down the mall. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So with these love coming those. back out, it was a must that I have them now when I fell in love with them though, it was in, uh, 2001 when they came out and, um, 
th there was a young lady literally like she was ever she was the idol she was the the great student athlete example for me and I would always hang out with her and she was older than I was and I, remember I went over there and I think like a few family members bought her a few pairs. So she didn't have one. She had multiple pairs. Nice, nice. And I went over there and she actually let me try them on. But when I first saw them, I'm like, what are those? It was literally <laughs> the epitome of what are those. And she's like, oh, these are the Jordan 11. These are the Concords. And it was at that point I went yeah. home. I'm like, mom, okay, I have to <laughs> get these. <laughs> These sneakers, 100%. like Catherine said, she was like, that's not happening. I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Compromise. Yes. So that, that that's point, your though, opinion, Mom. After you say magazine, I'm circling <laughs> retros and sliding it in front of her at dinner. I'm like, just so you know this is available. But being able to see that in 2001... Now, the, the bad part was, like, in 2011, I was finishing up undergrad, so you have all of those end of degree expenses to pay for and mom was like i can take care of those or you can try to get stuff you don't need so i was like all right i kind of want to be able to walk get everything i need so i didn't i couldn't get the pair in 2011 which is of course when all the craze happened and that's why we have to have reservations online because nobody could control themselves in indianapolis when the concord came out back then but i was able to pick up um, a 2011 pair on ebay in amazing condition but i didn't wear it a whole lot because i only had one pair and so now as soon as i got this oh i'm wearing that other pair a ton got it wearing it tons but this is the most i think still like special sneaker for me outside of wanting the jordan one um yeah. the bread one and that's yeah. just because even though it's not the band one we get it it's really right. not it was Ship. to me that still signifies going against the grain and doing your own thing yeah um when it came to jordan but this was yep. him elevating everything right yep. like he elevated everything. Everything with dunks his game his tenacity his i don't care i will beat you no matter what and when him and tinker designed this it took everybody Woo! by storm. Yeah, so, man. Geez. Yeah. It still is, honestly. Yeah. Old people, young people. They stop they you. Are, like, they know. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said this to Gabby, TJ, and like every, every, I mean, it's just true, I think, everywhere. Everyone knows that shoe and that silhouette. Like, you're yeah. a not a sneaker, it doesn't matter. What's your favorite Jordan of all time? I don't know sneakers, but that one with the black, the patent, the black Wait, patent the black leather? leather? Yeah. That, I that, like that, that one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It does. We still have people come in, like, they don't they don't even know that it's an 11. They just come in on release day, like, around the holidays, and they're like, that patent leather Jordan come out? And I'm like, <laughs> nah. the 11, yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, so, it's yeah, I would say this, this is still it was very special. I know some people didn't want to get the whole 45 on the yeah, back, yeah. they didn't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I don't care one bit. I even went and bought the sweatshirt that went with it that said, I'm back, 1996. Like, <laughs> right. I went and bought the sweatshirt as well. Um, I remember when they did the promo for this. Um, Brittany Elena, she actually like was literally it was the whole picture I seen of the Christmas tree. She had the Jordan Eleven in her hand. She had the fit on. I'm like, I need all that. That right there. That whole I need fit. All of that. Everything that's happening in this photo, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's the shoe, man. That's the one. Love it. That's the one. So always, it will forever uh, be special. And so like, I didn't go for the anniversary pair, but I actually went back for the win like '96. Nice. Because uh, that was a pair that that got away from me. Um, when it originally came out. And so it's not that I won't get the Jubilee down the line. It just wasn't like the must have 11 for mm -hmm. me. Like mm -hmm. I, I know I'll be yep. able to go, go back and eventually get it. I like it. See, I like that shit. I'll go back and get yep. it eventually. Right. I'll go back and get it eventually. <laughs> well, I mean, we could talk to TJ for 15 more hours about sneakers, Literally but of course we don't have hours. that much time folks, but TJ, this has been an immense pleasure. We really enjoyed having you on. Tell the people where they can find you. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me on. You guys can find me on Instagram every day. I'm posting multiple times a day, whether it's pictures or video um, at talks.with.tj. And then you can find me on YouTube. My channel name is Talks with TJ. There are tons of playlists you can pick from. So if you just want to see clothing hauls and unboxings, whether it's sneakers, uh, maybe you want to sit down and just listen to the budget discussion talks that I'll have on there. And then also there's a whole fear of God <laughs> and essentials <laughs> playlist on there at this point because uh, th that has become a whole lane in itself on my channel so feel free to uh keep up with me there i am consistently posting and i love engaging with you guys so feel free to comment like share i promise to try to get back to you the best that i can love it and folks you love know where to so find much. us we're on youtube apple Podcasts, spotify stitcher soundcloud man we're all over the place we're on twitter we're on instagram at kicks and shit show we're on facebook 
And yes, I know I said it before, it will happen sometime in 2021. We're going to be on TikTok as well. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one, guys, because it's going to be a vibe. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Peace.